Good morning to all. I hope you all are safe at your home. I, Ms. Kunchan Daswani from Shiv Jyoti Educational Group, Kota, welcome you all to the revision classes of English text. And today we are going to revise chapter number four, five children and it, and poem second that is tiger. So first we will revise chapter number four, five children and it. So let's see the main characters of this chapter first. So Cyril, Anthea. Jane, Robert, Lamb. These are the five children with whom the incident happened. Semiate, the strange creature, and Martha, their cook. So let's see what happened. So this story is about the five children that is Cyril, Anthea, Robert, Jane, and Lamb. So they were building a sand castle in a big gravel pit. What happened that time? They came across. A strange creature over there. Now, their first wish, like on being insisted by uh, Anthea, that creature came out of the hole. So that was their first wish. So who was that strange creature? So that strange creature was Semiet. Semiet is a sand fairy. So sand fairy who granted wish. So what happened? The children wanted that uh, creature, or I can say Semiet. To stay to grant their second wish also. Now they before that they asked about the other semiads also. So on that that creature replied that they are very few of uh, them because they are very delicate creatures. If they get wet, they sick, they get sick and then they die. So because of that they, uh, that they are very few. So now. After that, the children wanted that the creature should stay and grant their second wish also. Now, what was their second wish? To become very, very, very beautiful. So that was their second wish. Now, after being granted by their second wish, when their second wish got fulfilled, what happened? They were looking very strange because they wanted to become more beautiful, very beautiful, right? So what happened? They were unrecognized. They were not, nobody could recognize each other. If they are, were not wearing the same clothes, they were not able to recognize each other. Now, after that, when they, when they went to their home, their cook, Martha, didn't let them enter their house. Because she was also not able to recognize them. Because they were looking so different. So, she didn't let them enter their house and she scolded them and she just shut, their, shut the door on their faces. So, and so after wondering for a whole day, after what happened, after wondering for the whole evening, the, they just uh, they just know that after the sunset, everything is going to be normal. So they, they just waited uh, for the, till the sunset, and after that they went back home. So what happened? Uh, they went back home, and Martha just told them about the all about all the incident that happened, and she warned them that not to meet their that children. Again, that strange children again. Now after that they had, uh, the cook brought uh, in a supper which was very delicious. They had their supper uh, supper, and this was the end of the story. Now if I am, I can conclude that they were not happy after their second wish got fulfilled. Because although they were looking beautiful, but uh, nobody could uh, recognize them. So that was like they were looking like a silly greeting. So this is the end of the chapter. Now we are going to mark the internal questions of this chapter. So the first question you can mark on page number 34. So what came out of the hole? So this question you can mark on page number 34. It, the answer is a fat furry brown creature. So what came out of the hole? A fat furry brown creature. This is on the second line from the top. You can mark this answer over there. Okay, question number second. Who looked like a golden haired angel? So this question is on page number 35. You can mark this question on page number 35. And the answer to this question is Cyril. So the answer is Cyril looked like a golden haired angel. Now question number 3. Describe the way the same year granted wish to the children. So we have to describe the way how that creature granted wish. So it's on the same page only. It's on page number 35 itself. You can mark the answer over there. The semi stretched out its eyes on their stalks and seemed to hold its breath and puff itself. So this was the way of semi to grant wish. 
okay now these are the internal questions you can mark this internal question in your book and you have to write it in your rough copy as well so now we are moving to the copy work of this chapter uh, you have uh, we are we have given you the pdf you can refer to the pdf for that and you have done this all in your copy in your copies also now question number 1 what were the children doing when they found the sand fairy so when they found the sand sand fairy what were they doing as i told you in the previous slide also right that they were building a sand castle so the five children were building a sand castle in a big gravel pit when they suddenly saw the sand fairy so this is the answer for the first question question number second what was the name of the sand fairy describe its appearance now we have to tell the name of the sand fairy i told you the name that was semiet so uh, the name the sand fairy was a semiet it was about the size of a large cat but with arms legs feet and hand like a monkey's long whiskers and pointed ears like a bat's and it had a husky voice so uh, this was the appearance it was about the size of a large cat and its arms legs feet and hands were like a monkey and it was having a long whiskers like a cat has right uh, it has on the upper lip side it has some hairs coming out so these are what long whiskers and it had pointed ear like a bat as you have all have seen a bat so how uh, the, the same ear that creature was also having and it had a very husky or i can say a very rough voice so this was the appearance of the semi ant now question number 3 do you think the children were happy when their second wish came true explain now can you tell me the answer for this question as i told you that the children second wish was to become beautiful they wanted to become beautiful but they were not happy they were not happy when their wish came true they felt that they looked strange and completely different and they didn't recognize each other they looked they liked each other the way they originally were so what happened the, ch the children second wish was to become very beautiful but when that wish fulfilled when that wish came true they were not happy because they were looking very different they were not able to recognize each other and because of that they you they were li they liked each other the way they were looking original their original appearance they used to like their original appearance only now question number 4 Why did Martha not believe what children told her? What did they do when Martha sent them away? So Martha didn't believe the children because they looked so different. Why uh, when she sent them away, they wandered down the lane, finally sat down under a hedge and fell asleep there. So what happened? Martha didn't believe because believe the children because they were looking very different. They were, she was also not able to recognize them. So that the reason because the why martha didn't believe the children and what happened she, she just sent them away by shut the by shutting the door on their faces and what happened they just wandered down around the lane uh, and what happened after the sunset they also went back home as i told you so finally they sat down under a hedge and felt asleep there they said uh, they were there till the sunset okay so this is the answer for question 4 now question number 5 Why did Martha let the children into the house again? So why did Martha let the children into the house again when they came back home again? Why did did she enter let them enter their house? Uh, it's uh, their house. What happened? After the sunset the children were back to their normal selves. So when they came back home again, Martha let them back into the house. So what happened as I told you uh, when we were uh, doing the chapter that time also I told you that after the sunset uh, the children knew that they were be they will will be they will be back to their normal selves they will they will be back to their normal appearance their original appearance so after that when they came back home again uh, martha recognized them and she just let them enter their home again so this is the answer for this question now reference to context and you two girls look like silly greeting cards so this is a uh, the line and who said this line anju so robert said this to jane and anthea so this one line was said by robert to jane and anthea what do you think the speaker means so the speaker that means the, that means robert what does robert mean to uh, how why 
he said this the speaker means that they look too pretty in an unnatural way they were looking very uh, beautiful but uh, as a result they were not able to recognize each other so this is uh, the reference to context and this was chapter number 5 now we are going moving forward to poem second that is tiger so in this poem in stanza 1 the poet is describing about the life of tiger which he is living in uh, the cage in a zoo he is caged over there and he is moving few steps only because the distance of the cage is not very much so uh, after just uh, roaming around that uh, that uh, cage only that uh, distance used to end and he was just helpless over there in stanza second the poet tells us that uh, that uh, po uh, that the tiger should be should not be sitting in that cage she uh, that tiger should be snarling around houses she uh, that tiger should be roaming around the houses and scaring the villagers uh, or i can say to terrorize the villagers and now what happened now uh, you can say you can or i can say uh, that the poet is telling us about that he should be seeing its prey while whenever he is in that in his original place that is its natural home when he is in his natural home he should be uh, catching its prey over there now what happened in the in this in these two lines we are talking about that he but what happened but we are now coming to the reality of tiger so he is uh, just captured in a concrete cell or i can say a cemented cell pinjre mein band tha wo so what happened after that he is just ignoring every visitor who is coming because he can't do anything he can't make people afraid of him he was helpless so in the last paragraph in the last stanza the poet is talking about the poet is saying that the tiger is just looking above the sky while the while the cars were patrolling uh, of the zoo the zoo authority that time he was he's just looking in the sky and he is just thinking he is just ignoring everything he is just ignoring all everyone over there and he is just looking above the sky so this was poem second now we are going moving forward to its copy work now he should be that dash 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 the village so this paragraph is your is your third paragraph now name the poem and the poet the name of the poem is tiger and it's written by leslie norris so the writer or i can say the poet of this poem is leslie norris why should the tiger be snarling around the houses at the jungle's edge so the tiger should be snarling around the houses at the jungle's edge to terrorize the villagers instead of being captured by them so as i told you that they were she, uh, the tiger should be snarling around houses because he you, he should terrorize the villagers instead of being captured in a cage seven uh, c why are the fangs and claws of the tiger mentioned so the fangs and claws are mentioned to point out the natural ferocity of the animal and to highlight how it belongs to the wild so the fangs and claws means the white teeth white sharp teeth uh, tiger is having and the claws that means the, uh, the paws of the tiger or i can say panje in hindi so uh, why are the fangs and claws of the tiger mentioned to point out the natural ferocity of the animal that how uh, dangerous or how scary that animal is and to highlight the, that he belongs to while he belongs to jungle so this is poem second this is the po copy work of poem second and this is the revision of chapter 5 and poem second tiger so now we will revise the cha chapter of cha active and passive voice of english grammar now we will see a very important topic of english grammar that is active and passive voice this is a new topic for all of you that the, now i am going to explain you this topic so first we will talk about what is a voice the voice that you are hearing right now so now there are two ways of speaking something uh, like the meaning is same but the uh, but the ways are different so that is only voice so i can say that voice is of two types that is first one active voice
and second one that is passive voice so these are the two types of voice that is first is active voice and second is passive voice now let's see what is an active voice so active voice tells us when the subject performs the action so when the subject performs the action the voice is said to be in active voice the verb is said to be in active voice but when the subject receives the action okay that time the verb is of passive voice so this is when the subject performs the action that is active voice and when the subject receives the action that is passive voice now let's see an example related to is this so example of active voice is i like mangoes okay so this is the example of active voice you can see the subject which is i is directly performing the action right now when i come to the passive voice of this sentence what would be the passive voice let's see mangoes are light by me okay this is the example for passive voice now you can see the meaning of these two sentences is same but the way to write them is different so first when the subject is directly uh, performing the action that is active voice and when the subject is receiving the action that time the voice is passive voice now there are you can see some of the changes over there so what are the changes there are some rules for changing active voice into passive voice now now we will see the rules now we will see rules for changing active voice into passive voice so the first rule is the object of the active voice converts into the subject in the passive voice so the object converts into the subject and the subject of the active voice becomes the agent in the passive voice so this is the chain the object of the active voice converts into the subject uh, of the passive voice and the subject of the active voice converts into the agent becomes the agent of the passive voice so this is the first rule second is whenever we are changing uh, active voice into passive voice we will be using only the third form of the verb use we three or i can say the third form of the verb or the past participle form of the verb okay so we will be only using the third form of the verb in the passive voice when we are converting active into passive okay so remember this thing also the third point is the third point is that we, uh, that we should not uh, we will not form the uh, passive voice of future continuous tense okay we are seeing we will not form does not form passive voice of future continuous continuous tense okay remember these points whenever we, you are changing active into passive and for the structures you can refer to the pdf which has been sent to you now we are moving back to some of the examples related to to this topic that is active and passive voice so the first example i am writing now we will convert the sentence which i am writing it's of active voice and then we will convert that sentence into passive voice okay so first riya plays chess okay so this this sentence is of active voice first you need to identify the subject verb and object so what is the subject priya is the subject right this is verb okay and this is the object 
so chess is the object now as i told you according to the rule what will come first the object which is chess so we will write chess and before that just identify the tense over there so we are having the first form of verb so it's a simple present tense so we will apply simple present tense structure only we will apply over here so chess now the subject uh, the object over here that is chess that becomes the subject in the passive voice so this is in singular or plural this is singular so we will use is or are we will use Is. So the chess is now as I told you we will only use the third form of the verb. So the third form of play is played. Played. Then what will come by? Who is the subject over there? Ria. So we will write Ria over there because now it becomes an agent. Okay. So by Ria. Let's suppose. If I if I am having any kind of pronoun as a subject in active passive voice, so that pronoun will convert into something uh, some object pronoun. That is, I will convert into me, he will convert into him, she will convert into her, they will convert into them, and we will convert into us. And you and I, it will remain same. Okay. So if I replace Ria with she, so what will come in place of Ria? Her will come. Okay, these are some changes of pronoun that happen when we are converting active into passive voice. Now let's see the second example. Okay, I am writing Ram ate the whole cake. Once again. we will identify the subject verb and the object so what is the subject ram it is the verb and this is the object right so first what will come uh, the object before that just identify the tense that this sentence is of simple past tense because it's having the second form of the verb right so this sentence is of simple past tense so we will apply the structure for simple past tense so first what will come the object which is the whole cake so we will write the whole cake now we will use was or were so there was a single cake only right so we will use was because the subject is singular so we will use was the whole cake was ate that is the second form of eat the third form of eat is eaten so the whole cake was eaten by what will come by and then the name is written over there ram which is the subject in active voice now it will become the agent so we will write by ram so this is a conversion of this sentence into passive voice for the more examples you can relate you can see the exercise which is given to you as a pdf with the explanation video so this was all now we have revised chapter num uh, chapter active and passive voice of grammar i hope you have understood this please revise thoroughly thank you